when Bob and I first saw the 1955 Plymouth, we knew we had the car of the year, a new model that would attract a lot of new customers. But it wasn't until we saw the new Ford that we realized what a great sales spot we're in. Why, Ford owners are natural prospects for Plymouth this year. Right, Bob? You bet. That's why we brought this Ford over, so we could look over the two cars from every angle. We've been looking for comparison ammunition, and we've found plenty. You can say that again. We have selling advantages in everything a prospect considers in an automobile. Beauty and performance mainly, but also comfort, safety, easy driving, everything. Let's take beauty. The prospect can see at a glance that the styling offered by Plymouth is definitely fresher and newer. He knows that even before we say anything about it. But when we show him that the new Plymouth is longer and lower than Ford, for instance, then we're telling him why and how the Plymouth looks better. This will help convince him even more. Yes, and the Plymouth doesn't borrow anything from last year's styling. With those reverse angles, front and rear, the swept back windshield, and a low silhouette, it has a fast, hug the road look that folks like. But you take Ford now. The main difference between it and last year's model is the windshield, and they copied that from the 1954 GM models. Then there are a couple of minor items, like the new side chrome, which tries hard to disguise last year's lines, and a new grille, which was newer back in 1946 when Chrysler had it. Add to that the taillights, which may be Ford's only reason for the claim that their styling was inspired by the Thunderbird, and we have the sum total of what's new about Ford styling in 55. You know, a look at Plymouth's full-view windshield alongside a Ford's copy of the GM windshield really dramatizes the difference in the styling of the two cars. Plymouth's full-view windshield is brand new and original, with corner posts slanted back for a harmonious flowing effect. It lends itself to the forward look of the car. Ford's vertical post windshield gives it a static look. Which is in great contrast to the forward look that Plymouth shows in every line. The feeling of harmonious style, the unity of design, is carried right through to the rear deck. Sure, there's no bulging boxiness to the Plymouth luggage compartment, and yet it's the biggest luggage compartment of all three. The Plymouth compartment is both wider and deeper than Ford. It has such refinements as the gas filler pipe relocated behind the spare tire where it won't take up valuable luggage space, and torsion bar suspension instead of old-fashioned coil springs and hinges that stick out and mar luggage and take up space. Now, let's get inside the cars, Ken, because that's another place where there's a big contrast between Plymouth's smart new styling and Ford's warmed overlooks. Well, first of all, I'd like to point out that the Plymouth door openings are higher than Ford's in both front and rear, in spite of the Plymouth being lower in overall height. So it's a lot easier to get in and out of our car. Now, here's where Plymouth's brand new beauty meets the prospect's eye from the second he opens the door. The first thing he sees is Plymouth Color Harmony. The two basic colors are used throughout the entire interior, including the instrument panel, luxurious deep pile carpeting, and even the steering wheel. Instruments are balanced, one against the other, so that they present a picture of perfect symmetry. And, of course, they're easy to read, as instruments should be. And I think the steering wheel is the smartest ever designed by Plymouth. It looks and feels years ahead of the Ford steering wheel. And, of course, one reason Plymouth looks so far ahead of Ford is the flight control lever on the instrument panel. It's a Plymouth first in its field, further proof that Plymouth is building tomorrow's cars, not last year's. I'm going to point out the flight control lever before the prospect has a chance to miss it at the wheel. I'll explain that a lever at the steering wheel is okay for a manual shift transmission, but with a fully automatic transmission, like power flight, you just turn on the ignition key, flick the flight control to drive while your hand is right there, and forget about it. So why have it in the way? Something else the prospect's gonna like better on the Plymouth is the visibility bonus he gets when he sits behind the Plymouth wheel. 
He sees more because our swept back corner posts open up a new vision area in the upper corner. And you know, if you put your hand right here, you can show the eye level blind spot that's created by a vertical post like Ford's. Take your hand away, and you show how much he gains by owning a Plymouth with swept back posts. Another good way to demonstrate the difference is to hold your arms straight up to represent Ford corner posts, then slant them back to represent Plymouth. Well, he can see our visibility advantage, and he can feel our comfort advantage. More and more folks expect luxury car comfort in the lowest price field. Then they're looking for Plymouth. Only Plymouth has chair height seats, which let driver and passengers sit in a natural, more comfortable position. There's no jackknifing of your legs like you get in the lower Ford seats. The Plymouth owner can ride relaxed, mile after mile, because he has more leg room and more hip room in both the front and rear compartment. For hot weather comfort, only Plymouth has an adjustable cowl ventilator, which provides an extra source of fresh air from above the pavement and the dust and fumes. And for draft-free ventilation in the rear compartment, Plymouth has vent windows, the same as in front. Believe it or not, Ford doesn't have vents in the rear, not even on the fare lane. And while we're on comfort, let's talk about the riding qualities of the two cars. Yes, that's an especially good thing to be familiar with this year because Ford is touting its angle-poised ride so highly. Well, last year it was ball joint suspension that was supposed to make Ford a better riding car. Apparently they felt they needed something else, and so this year they've added angle-poised ride. Actually, it's nothing more than a simple tilting of the coil springs in front. They claim they reduced road joint jar as much as 15%. Now, even if the entire 15% is obtained, it still doesn't give them much comfort to talk about. Not when you consider that Plymouth uses Auroflow shock absorbers. Why, they're two and a half times more effective than the ordinary shock absorbers that Ford uses. They handle little road joints as well as big chuck holes. Add to that Plymouth's new shock absorber mounting in front, inside the coil springs for more precise control on all bumps. And Plymouth's non-parallel control arms on the front suspension, which cut down body tilt and tire squeal on curves. And Plymouth's wider splay-mounted rear springs, which give a soft boulevard ride and make the car more stable. Add those up, and it's easy to see why Plymouth's ride, always superior to that of the other two, is even further ahead today. Angle poise or no angle poise. You see what we meant when we said we'd found out plenty about the Plymouth and Ford? And this is only half the story. When we said earlier that the Plymouth led Ford in all departments, we weren't fooling. We've already seen how far ahead Plymouth is in styling and also in both seating and riding comfort. Now, let's look at the performance each car gives. And when anyone talks performance, the first thing that comes to mind is engines. So we're plenty happy that the Plymouth High Fire V8 is a brand new engine with the most advanced design and the highest horsepower in the lowest price field. It turns out a booming 167 horsepower. And what's more, with its 7.6 to 1 compression ratio, it develops this luxury car power on non-premium fuel. As for the Ford engine, there's nothing new or advanced about it. It's a souped up version of last year's engine and still falls five horsepower short of matching the high fire engine. And horsepower is only one difference. Plymouth's high fire V8 uses a polysphere combustion chamber. It has rounded surfaces, so there aren't any corners where carbon can collect. Of course, Ford still has a wedge-shaped chamber that lets carbon build up. That means power loss, engine ping, and a loss of performance that a Plymouth owner doesn't have to worry about. Another advantage of the high-fire polysphere chamber is that it permits the use of large valves placed diagonally across from each other. These valves let the fuel mixture in and the exhaust fumes out more easily. 
The fuel mixture and exhaust gases have a rougher passage through Ford's wedge-shaped combustion chamber because the valves are placed side by side. That's right, Ken. And the high fire engine scoops Ford on many other features which add up to years of top performance. For one thing, Ford is the only V8 made today that still has a manual choke and solid non-adjustable valve lifters. Plymouth has an automatic choke and hydraulic valve lifters for quiet operation without valve adjustments. And a double breaker distributor and dual automatic spark control for doubly sure firing and precise timing always. And a rotary oil pump and floating oil intake for most efficient circulation of the cleanest oil. A self-cleaning fuel filter in the gas tank where it protects fuel lines. A waterproof ignition system for easier, faster starting in wettest weather. All those standard Plymouth advantages, along with Plymouth's greater horsepower, come under the heading of performance. And all together, they put the Plymouth well out in front, as in all other departments. But before we leave performance, Bob, let's dispose of Ford's trigger torque. Their greatest claim to performance seems to be built around those two words. Well, let's get basic. Just what is trigger torque? Simply stated, it's a way of starting in low gear by pressing the accelerator all the way to the floor. What's the benefit? It lets the driver start faster, providing there's nobody in front of him at the light when he starts. Now, when the Ford gets to 18 miles an hour, it automatically upshifts to second. And that second gear does not multiply torque as much as Plymouth's breakaway range. And a Plymouth will stay in breakaway past 50 miles an hour. So whatever advantage a Ford might have on a clear street is lost as soon as it hits 18 miles an hour. Now Plymouth puts the acceleration emphasis in the cruising speeds. For emergencies or for fun, a Plymouth driver can kick down to that fast breakaway gear. The Ford driver well, he can kick down the second, but the trigger torque gimmick just isn't there anymore. So, on the road where acceleration is important, the Ford just goes <laughs> again. <laughs> well, it may not be that bad, but I'm convinced that a Plymouth Road demonstration will make any Ford owner's eyes pop. You know, this is a good place to bring in the fact that along with superior performance, Plymouth also provides the greatest safety. Let's take breaks. As always, Plymouth's Safeguard hydraulic brakes lead the field when it comes to smooth, sure, safe stops. The smoothness is due to the Plymouth front wheel brake construction. Equal pressure is applied to the two brake shoes because there are two cylinders and two brake shoe anchors mounted opposite each other. Ford's brake shoes get unequal pressure because there's just one anchor and a single cylinder. So pressure on the brake drum is uneven and braking is less predictable. Of course, the addition of power brakes tends to magnify the original characteristics. So adding power to Plymouth's brakes means even smoother stopping. While adding power to brakes like Ford's, which tend to be unpredictable anyway, only makes the situation worse. Yes, sir, and remember, Plymouth also has an independent parking brake an important safety feature that Ford does not have. Because it's independent of the service brakes, the Plymouth driver actually has a second braking system, which could be used in emergencies. Another safety feature Ford doesn't quite match is Plymouth's combination of tubeless tires and safety rim wheels, the finest blowout protection on the road. For safer bad weather driving, Plymouth's windshield wipers clear a greater glass area. They're electrically operated, and they're twice as powerful as Ford's. That means they'll maintain the speed at which they're set, even when they're clearing slush or mud. Ford's vacuum-operated wipers can slow down or stop completely while the engine is pulling hard. So, as we said earlier, Plymouth is ahead of Ford in every department, whether it's styling, comfort, performance, or safety. Style-wise, Plymouth is longer, lower, with smoother lines, which give the car a look of motion even when it's parked. Comfort, in which Plymouth traditionally leads its field, is increased through roomier interiors, better seating, and Plymouth's unbeatable ride. 
And listen, we've just been looking at these V8s. Put six-cylinder engines under those hoods, and we've got the same beauty, comfort, and handling ease benefits. And we still take first prize for performance with the PowerFlow 117. And the PowerFlow 117 develops peak horsepower at 3,600 revolutions per minute. The Ford 6 has just three more horsepower, but has to rev up to 4,000 RPM to get it. Well, the horsepower is practically the same, and folks who are interested in a six aren't usually after the highest possible number of horses anyway. The kind of performance they want, and the kind Plymouth offers, is dependable, long-lasting performance. It comes from the quality that's built into the engine. You're right there, Ken. And Ford just can't match the PowerFlow 117 features for that kind of performance. Because only Plymouth builds a six with exhaust valve seat inserts, resistor-type spark plugs, a fuel filter in the gas tank, a floating oil intake, and an automatic choke. Yes, and on every Plymouth, you get an oil bath air cleaner standard. And on the Belvedere and Savoy, you get an oil filter standard. They're extra cost on any Ford 6. It's those built-in quality features that give us the prize-winning performance I mentioned. Uh, I'm with you up to that point, Ken. You really mean prize-winning? Sure, we get the prize from the best judges in the world. The taxi cab operators who've made Plymouth their favorite for years and who are buying PowerFlow Plymouths again in 1955. It's their choice for dependable day in and day out running, for economical operation, and for a cab that'll stay out of the service shop. Well, what do you fellows out there think? We offer the most in beauty, comfort, easy driving, safety, and either the highest horsepower V8 or the most dependable six. I'll tell you what we plan to do about those present Ford owners. We're going to contact Ford owners in our town. We're going to demonstrate the differences between Ford and Plymouth. And with some hard selling to back up this beautiful automobile, we're going to give the local Ford dealer a real surprise. He's going to find out that a lot of people on the Ford owners list have 1955 Plymouths in their driveways. Please like and subscribe to stay tuned for more videos.